Did you know that every year there are 3 million people who die because of the harmful use of alcohol? That's equivalent to 5.3% of all deaths in the world. Moreover, statistics show that alcohol abuse causes more than 200 types of diseases. Aside from the health problems that alcohol abuse causes, it also leads to significant economic and social burdens to individuals and our society. Research also established a strong link between alcohol abuse and mental and behavioral disorders. Now you might be thinking, Josh, this is the day of trumpets. Why are you talking about alcohol? Why are you you are sharing these statistics to us? Well, brethren, the reason is this. I want to show you in this message the connection between drunkenness and the day of trumpets. To, dem to demonstrate to you my main point, brethren, let's go to Luke 21, verse 29 to 36. Luke 21, verse 21, 29 to 36. Let's see here, brethren. Now, this is a very important topic, brethren, because if we don't understand the connection of these two concepts, we might not be able to fully appreciate the meaning of this day, the day of trumpets. Let's go there, brethren. Luke 21, 29, 36. Verse 29 said, we read, Then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. So this passage, brethren, aligns with the meaning of this day. The day when Yahshua will return here on earth. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. This passage tells us that Yahshua's return is sure. Alright? There's, there's no question about it. One day, Yahshua will return here on earth. But the problem is, we just don't know will, when will it happen. No one knows when will it happen. That's why... In verse 34, Yeshua gave us a very important warning. So this is where I want us to focus our att attention, brethren. In verse 34, it says, But take heed to yourselves. Take heed. Be aware. Pay attention. Beware. Alright? Just like when you see a signage, it says, Beware of dogs. You have to be aware that there are dogs around you. It says, But take heed to, to who? To yourself. He didn't say that take it to other people, look at other people. You see, sometimes we are so busy criticizing other people, gossiping about them, and we forget about ourselves. We forget that we are also subject to the same temptations, to the same weaknesses. That's why Yahshua is saying, take heed to yourself. And what was and why do we have to take heed your, ourselves, brethren? He says, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day comes on you unexpectedly. Did you see that, brethren? Yahshua mentioned three things here. Carousing, drunkenness, and the cares of this life that would prevent us from watching, from truly appreciating the, appreciating the meaning of this day, the day of trumpets. But in this message, brethren, I just want to focus on the first two things, brethren. The two things here, carousing and drunkenness. What do you mean by carousing and drunkenness? You see, if you look into the Greek words of these two words, carousing and drunkenness, they are so related that it's, sometimes it's difficult to really see the difference with, between these two things. So let's go first with the word carousing. Carousing comes from the Greek word krapaile. K-R-A-I-P-A-L-E. So that's the word, the Greek word. K-R-A-I-P-A-L-E. Krahipal A. Which refers to a specific type of headache that is caused by drunkenness. So, 
it refers to that kind of headache. Perhaps um, you have experienced drunkenness. You have experienced that kind of headache. It's very uh, painful in your head. So that's the word krapaile. And this word is just, interestingly enough, it's just used in this passage. Nowhere else in the Bible you would find the same, ver- the same Greek word. Now, if you look into the word carousing, carousing refers to the excessive indulging of appetite. Right? It also refers to, la- to um, drinking sessions with lively music and, and excessive noise. So, perhaps um, you might have an idea of this in, in night bars or night clubs. They have happy hour. They have this specific hour where they would have unlimited, unlimited alcohol, unlimited beer. So, this is what they call carousing. Now, what is the difference between carousing and drunkenness? The Greek word for drunkenness is methe, M-E-T-H-E, M-E-T-H-E. So that's the Greek word. It means intoxication. You see, brethren, you can carouse, but you don't, you don't get drunk, right? I remember my uncle, he's so used to drinking alcohol that he doesn't get drunk anymore. His body is used to drinking alcohol. So, I would say that my, my uncle is carousing. But he, he doesn't get drunk anymore because his body is so used to alcohol. So, this is the difference between carousing and drunkenness. Now, why did Yahshua have to tell us that take heed yourself that you may be weighed down, meaning your heart will be burdened. It will be weighed down by carousing drunkenness. What is the effect of drunkenness to our body? It says here that alcohol has a unique way of altering, interrupting, and interfer- interfering with the communication pathway of the brain. Literally, alcohol changes the way your brain works. So, you could see here that, for example, our brain is up here and then we want to move our hands and our feet or our legs. So, it has a way of altering the communication between our brain and our body. So that's why uh, a drunk person wants to move forward, but he moves backward, diba? one step forward, and then two steps backward. So that's how they, 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 they walk already. So that's how drunkenness can affect our body. Too much alcohol can affect our balance, our memory, speech, and judgment. According to research, drinking alcohol during the, your teenage years, so this is a warning for teenagers, if you drink too much alcohol, it can prevent proper brain development. Moreover, alcohol misuse can cause blackouts, which blocks the brain from converting short-term memory to long-term memory. That's why sometimes drunk people would not remember anymore what happened to them last night because of blackouts, because of, of the effect of drunkenness in their brain. Now, alcohol abuse can shut down the basic life support functions of our brain that affect breathing, the beating of the heart, and temperature regulation. That's why alcohol overdose can lead to permanent brain damage and, worst of all, death. Now, I want to show you a a picture of what, a picture of brain of an alcoholic person. Let me just, um, let's just flash that up. So on top of the picture, that's the brain of a normal, normal, erda, normal elderly person. And then the second uh, row, you'll find the brain of a person with Alzheimer's disease. Now look at the brain of an alcoholic person. Did you see that? The brain of that person shrinked. So it could really literally change your brain. So that's how dangerous alcohol abuse is. And that's why Yahshua is saying that we should take heed because if we are not careful, we are going to destroy our brain. And you know what, brethren, what happened? If we are going to destroy our brain, then Satan will have, a, will have an easier way to destroy us. Because once he destroyed our thinking ability, then God will not be able to use us more effectively in our work, in his work. That's why, brethren, if you go to Leviticus 10, verse 8 to 11, let's go there, brethren. Leviticus 10, verse 8 to 11. It says, Then Yahweh spoke to Aaron, saying, Do not drink 
wine or intoxicating drink, you nor your sons with you, when you go into the tabernacle of beating, lest you die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations that you may distinguish between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean and that you may teach the children of Israel all the statutes when Yahweh spoke to them by the hand of Moses. So we can see here, brethren, that Yahweh himself knew the tremendous negative effects of wine and intoxicating drinks. That's why when we are serving him, he commanded that we should refrain from drink, drinking these alcoholic drinks. Now, I don't know any of us who have alco um, drinking problem. I don't know personally any of you have this problem. And we might say, oh, I'm safe. I'm, I'm, def I'm definitely not a drunkard. I don't abuse alcohol. Actually, I don't even touch beer. I don't like it. So, yes, I'm safe with this uh, uh, this, this warning of Yahshua is for others, not me. This is not a problem. Well, think again, brethren. Before that kind of thinking comes into your mind, let me remind you once again about the warning given by Yahshua. Take heed to yourself. You know why, brethren? Because carousing and drunkenness aren't simply about physical drunkenness. The Bible also speaks about spiritual drunkenness. Let's go to Revelation 17, verse 1 to 2, brethren. Revelation 17, verse 1 to 2, it says, Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, you notice this, brethren, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk, with the wine of her fornication. So this doesn't, this doesn't refer to physical, physical drinks, drinking wine. This is, this is actually referring to spiritual drunkenness. You see, brethren, fornication in this verse, it says it were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. If you look into the Greek word of this word, it is porneia, where we also get the word pornography. Now, porneia, the Greek word of that is not actually, it's not really about just pornography, it's about sexual immorality. But we could see that pornography is part of sexual, porn, sexual immorality. Now, my question is this, are you drunk with pornography? You see, brethren, like alcoholic drinks, pornography has a unique way of dulling the senses. Now, this is according to research. I'm, I, I didn't make this up. You might say that, ah, pornography is just watching. It, it's just a little fun. It doesn't hurt me. Look at this, brethren. According to research, pornography causes abnormal increased levels of dopamine in the brain, which causes the brain to decrease in size, shape, and chemical balance. So it could actually, literally, it could decrease the size of your brain. So, it could cause, again, the way of thinking. And when Satan actually destroys our thinking ability, God will not be able to use us effectively for his work. Now, fornication here, actually, brethren, is not just about sexual immorality. If you look into, again, the word porneia, the other word or other meaning of this is it refers to idolatry. Idolatry. So if you go back to, if you continue reading Revelation 17, brethren, in verse 3 to 4, it says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. Now, people will see this woman with, his, with her allure, the beauty, and the majesty, that they will be so impressed at the sight of this woman that they would be driven to idolatry. You see, brethren, in verse 5, the name, the woman is called Babylon the Great. Now, this world is built in the Babylonian system a system that is founded 
into rebellion against God. It doesn't mean that you don't bow to a grieving image. Oh, I don't bow. We don't have grieving image in the house. We don't have uh, a cross or a rosary. I don't. We don't have that. It doesn't mean that way, brethren, because idolatry is something that you commit when you let something get between you and Yahweh. That is idolatry. So that's why, brethren, this world will be attracted to this woman. And if you're not careful, you would allow this world to get you intoxicated. We can be so engrossed, so immersed and occupied with the world, has to offer that we become intoxicated and drunk. You see, brethren, we can be drunk with success. We can be drunk with money, with our gadgets, with our work, with our physical possessions. We don't notice it, brethren, but sometimes we get drunk with these things. With the world ambition to the point that we're going to forget the day of trumpets. We are so focused on what, we, what this world can get. Actually, brethren, I, I, I saw this video about a pastor asking his... Uh, about a pastor talking to he, one of his members and, his, and he said, what, How would you feel if Yahweh or... Or Yahshua, they, they call, he called him Jesus. What would you feel if Jesus would return tomorrow? And this woman said, Oh no, no, I don't want him to go back yet. Because I want to do this, I want to do that, I still want to travel the world, I still, want, I still have a lot of ambitions. Did you see that, brethren? If we are not careful, this world can get us drunk of the many things. Now don't think that the, the rich and the famous have the, has, has this problem. Also the poor. You see, people can also be drunk with poverty, with sadness, with anger, and bitterness, and even faithlessness, brethren. So this is why Yahshua is saying that, take heed to yourself, lest your heart be weighed down with carousing and drunkenness. He knows, brethren, that these things could prevent us and could make us lose our focus to the coming kingdom of Yahweh. That's why, brethren, it is very important for us to keep the Day of Trumpets every year because it serves as a reminder for us that one day Yahweh will send back His Son here on earth and He will step into the human affairs and He will establish the kingdom of His Father here on earth. With that, brethren, I hope and pray that all of us would know the danger of not just physical but also the spiritual drunkenness. And how we should be more serious than ever to make our calling sure. My sincere desire, brethren, is that, when, is that when the seventh trumpet sounds, we'll see each other floating together, meeting our Master and Savior, Yeshua, in the air.